Welcome back. May apat na buwan pa bago magsimula ang 2018 World Cup. Pero ngayon pa lang, may tag na as title favorites ang ilang bansa tulad ng defending champion na Germany, Brazil, France, Spain at Argentina. Usapang World Cup tayo with football analysts Mikey Carrion at Natasha Alquiroz. Guys, thank you so much for coming here to our inaugural episode of The Score Road to Russia. Thanks for having us. Yes. It's great to see you guys, uh, Mikey and Tasha. Sa football ko lang kayo nakikita tuwing Thursday. Pero ngayon, every Friday, we will have this very special segment for the World Cup. As we know, later this year, in June, magkakaroon tayo ng World Cup sa Russia. I want to ask you guys, since you guys are players, ano ba yung significance nitong World Cup? And when did you guys first fall in love with the biggest sporting event in the world? Well, the significance of the World Cup is huge, no, Anton? I mean, football is the most soccer, football is the game most played all over the world by everybody. So it's a, it's a big thing. Like you said, it only happens every four years. So mm -hmm. us football fans, we're really like dying and waiting for every, you know, every four years to, for this to happen. You get to see the best players in the world all compete together. Mm -hmm. So it's a, it's a huge thing. It's a huge thing. What about for you, Natasha? Uh, what, what is your first memory of uh, watching the World Cup? So my first memory of ever watching the World Cup was actually the 2002 World Cup Finals between Brazil and Germany, where in Brazil won. So that's my very first memory of football. That's how I fell in love with the game. Mm -hmm. And you know, seeing the likes of Ronaldo, Ronaldinho, Roberto Carlos, all of a sudden, I didn't realize how big football was <laughs> until I saw all the people around me cheering, and you could yeah. see the passion in them mm -hmm. when players score a goal and you can you know why it's called the beautiful game okay now of course the world cup is happening in russia mikey is there a different sense of excitement knowing that every four years it's held in a different country <laughs> now it's russia so what are you looking forward to watching the world cup there well like you said it's every four years and it's in a different country so i guess you know the fans sometimes it, now it's in russia it's in europe Next, um, sometimes it's in South America, it's happened in Asia. So, I, you know, the fans in that part of the world, they're very excited. You know, it's much easier for them to travel to, to those countries as well. The only difficulty that's happening in Russia, as I see, it's, it's such a big country. Mm -hmm. So, you know, a lot of venues are far away from each other. So, you know, a lot of traveling going on. So I think that's, that's what we're going we're gonna to expect from Russia. All right. Natasha, I want to ask you, are there any new rules or changes when it comes to the tournament format or could you tell us also about the brackets for this year's World Cup? Alright, so usually in the World Cup it's um, 32 teams within okay. eight, groups, uh, 8 groups so there's going to be the group stage where it's going to be round robin with the four teams, so two teams will qualify from there. After that, it's going to be the knockout stage where in, like, in Team A, Top one of Team A will go against the top two of Team B and so on and so forth. So it's going to be knockout stage of round of 16 and then you have the quarterfinals, semifinals and then the finals. Mikey, have you seen the groupings? Have you seen uh, the countries batch together? Yes, yes. So for you, what is the toughest group? Meron na bang group of death na naikita mo doon? Well, actually, we were talking about it earlier. Um, okay. If you look at the groups, um, there are a lot of groups. So a lot of teams are spread it out. So I think right now you can't say there's um, one group of death. But obviously I think one of the strong groups is the group um, where Argentina is. Mm -hmm. You got um, Nigeria, who's one of the top best teams in, in Africa. Okay. And then you also got a team, um, Croatia. You know, it, he, it might not be a contender to win the, the championship, but they have a pretty decent team. And, you know, any given day they can give, make it a hard fight for, against Argentina. So I think that's a pretty strong team right there. What about you, Natasha? Is there any particular group that you feel is very competitive? Well, what I um, more that I'm excited about okay. seeing is that the fact that Portugal and Spain are actually yeah. grouped in the same group. Mm -hmm. So it's nice to know that you know two of these big teams will be going against each other in the first round, palang. Okay. Um, since I asked Natasha earlier her first memory about the World Cup, I want to ask you, Mikey, and I know you have a very interesting story about how you used to watch the World Cup. <laughs> Kindly share uh, with everybody watching right now, kung paano ka ba nahilig dito sa World Cup? How did you get hooked? Well, I've, ever since <laughs> I was a little boy, I loved football. Uh, you know, I've been following the sport. Um, well, I, grew, I, I was born in the Philippines, so, but I, yeah. I, at a young age, I traveled to Spain a lot. Mm -hmm. So I really got into the game and then... 
when I would come back to the Philippines, I'd like to watch football games. But back in the days, in the, in the 80s, I guess a lot of the people watching us, they were, may, might not even been born yet, no? So back in those days, it was very yeah. difficult. There was no cable yet back then. Um, ha really hard to find games. So yeah. you'd have to get um, pirated Betamax tapes. Mm -hmm. I don't know if people <laughs> Betamax remember. tapes. Yes, Betamax <laughs> tapes. Um, a lot of friends of my, from my dad who would travel back from Spain would bring games. And, and uh, like I mentioned to you earlier, you know, Anton, there was this place in Makati mm -hmm. on Pasay Road where they would rent out Betamax tapes. And you could eventually find some World Cup games there. And, yeah. But, um, I remember I started watching those tapes, I think, um, from the 1982 World Cup that was held in Spain. And my first memories of watching games was um, the 1974 World Cup in West Germany, wow. which West Germany won. So that's how I really started um, getting involved in, into the World Cup. And those are the first, my first memories of watching the World Cup. And I know also that since you lived in Spain, you are cheering for Spain <laughs> in the upcoming World Cup. Natasha, you know, man, who are you rooting for here in, uh, in, in Russia? So my top two teams, of course, number one is Brazil by default because okay. they've been my team ever since they were the first football team that I ever watched. Mm -hmm. And my other team would also be Argentina okay. because of the likes of Messi, Dybala, um, Di Maria, Aguero, okay. all okay. playing up on top. Okay. Let's talk about storylines now. Mikey, what do you think are one of the most interesting storylines that people should pay attention to in the upcoming World Cup? Well, um, the stories now um, um, about the World Cup, um, like I was saying, it's just a really huge tournament, no, yeah. Anton? And it's the bit, like I said, it's the biggest game in the world, the football. So um, I think for them, they should just follow, try to follow as much as games possible so they yeah. can get to learn and, you know, see the new players, see the up-and-coming players and who are going to be you know, the future stars in this sport. So I think that's what they should be trying to, trying to follow once, the, once we start showing the matches. I just want to ask you guys this because uh, the last World Cup, there was talk about Messi having a date with Destiny when Argentina faced off against Germany. And um, unfortunately, Nanalo of Germany. Do you think uh, Messi is still the best player in the world and has a chance to redeem himself here in Russia this year? What do you guys think? Well, for me, I still consider him one of the best players mm -hmm. in the world. And I think that Argentina, with the class that they have now and how well they've been doing, that they still have a good chance to make it again in the finals. Okay. Fearless forecast. I'm, I'm not going to let you guys go without giving your fearless forecast. I know it's pretty early, but let's look at Mikey, Natasha, do ba? Well, if you ask me, I have... Um, I mentioned it earlier. No, um, I have. I think I have. There are four teams that you can count on. Okay. I think the top three are going to be um, Germany, um, Brazil. But we were talking about it earlier. No, Anton, Brazil's coming. Um, their star player, their top yeah. player, Neymar, mm. just got injured uh, injured a few days ago. Mm -hmm. He's going to be operate, getting operated um, at the end of the week. He's going to be out two to three months. So we're going to have to see how he comes into the World Cup and how healthy he is. Mm -hmm. And then my third team, of course, like you said, I'm a Spain fan. Yes. <laughs> um, we won the World Cup recently, yeah. back in 2010. Uh -huh. So I think, you know, the new renewed team of Spain, new coach and everything, I think they're one on, the, on my list. And uh -huh. then, like she was saying, a team with Messi, you can never count them out. Yeah, we're also going to have to see you know, how he comes in physically, if he's going to be in good shape. You know, there's still a lot of time. A lot of things can happen. You know, they're playing in the leagues right now. They're in the crucial part of the season. They're playing Champions League as well. So many things can happen in these, like, three, four months until the World Cup. But I think those are my top four teams. What about you, Natasha? So, again, as I said, um, I already mentioned Argentina yeah. will be there. Mm -hmm. Second is Germany. Okay. You know, they've been doing really well in the football scene, even in their own leagues. And then as well as Brazil. Mm -hmm. Because even um, without Neymar, you also have uh, Coutinho, okay. and you have a really good um, backline okay. with the backline with Marcelo, Dani Alves, and the likes. And of course, my fourth team, just because I would put England. Because okay. on paper, they're good, but that's always a thing with England. On paper, they always seem to be good, but they can't seem to make it there. <laughs> and Mikey seems to be smiling beside you. I think he's doubting that. <laughs> Harry Kane, Rashford. <laughs> well, Natasha, Mikey, thank you so much for dropping by, and uh, we have a lot more football to talk about in the coming weeks. Thank you. Thanks for having us. Thank you. See you guys. For more sports updates, keep watching The Score. And don't forget to subscribe.